Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. I've got a real quick and easy one for you today and it's how to make infinite grunge brushes in just under a minute using this one technique. Really simple, really fun. Let's get into it. Okay, so really quickly, just to show you what we're making here today. This is an example of one of the grunge brushes I made with this technique. I also made this in another video. I believe it was my how to fade out images for t-shirts video. And pretty much now I'm just expanding on that technique and showing you how to create more brushes just like this that you could use for a number of things. Here's another brush that I'll show you right now. So this one's pretty nice. This is one that I was experimenting with just a few minutes ago. And I also did another one sort of like this. Pretty cool texture on it. So these can be used for a number of things. For one, you could fade out images with these. Really nice and it looks a lot better than a normal soft brush fade. You can also use it, say, to add some depth to your design, maybe by painting in sort of a backdrop. So you see here, I'm painting behind Eddie Van Halen. Looks pretty cool with this grunge brush. So yeah, something like this, really cool effect. You can, of course, also draw or do any lettering with these, and it just gives it a really cool, obviously, grungy feel. I also used a grunge brush like this for my most recent video, the Breaking Bad full design walkthrough video. I used a grunge brush for the coloring part of that process. So it comes in handy in a lot of situations, and right now I'm gonna show you how to make a ton of these really quickly with this one simple technique. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just have a document open, make a new document. The size or dimensions don't really matter. I just, you know, <laughs> be in a document whatever is convenient for you. Then take a soft round brush. That is the first brush in our list of general brushes here. So the hardness should be at zero and the size should be well, whatever you deem is fit for the document. Right now, I'm just gonna use a size of about something a little bit small because this is quite a big document. So I'm gonna go for 700, but the size really doesn't matter for this. But if you'd like to follow what I'm doing, I'm in a 16 by 20, 300 DPI document and the size I'm using for the brush is 700. So next thing I'm gonna do is just make a new layer here. Make sure it's an empty layer. So we could just create a new layer. And within that layer, just click once with that soft brush to paint in that layer, and then click one more time. And this will create, obviously, two iterations of our soft brush. This looks like a nice back to white gradient here. But what we're actually going to do is make this layer into a smart object. So go ahead and right click on the layer, convert it to a smart object. And now once we double click on this thumbnail to open up the smart object, we see we have that, that pretty much brush gradient isolated from the from everything. So now it's in its own document and the document size is cropped to the exact points of the ends of this gradient. So now what we're gonna do is make a new layer and just fill that with white. So command backspace to fill that with white and then just bring that behind our brush stroke right here. All right, cool. Next up, we're just going to merge both of these. So I'll select both of them and merge. If you want, you could duplicate and merge just so that you know you have the original stuff in place, but it really doesn't matter. All right, so now that we have this duplicate layer, what we're gonna do is grunge this up. And how can we do that? By using grunge textures. So you can really use whatever textures you want. You could use my textures, you could use Google textures, you could use textures from anywhere you got. Just drag some textures in and let's texturize this. All right, for sake of this being super accessible, I've just searched up grunge texture on Google, and we're gonna use pretty much whatever we find here. So I like this texture here, and it's nice and high quality. We see it's 4K resolution, so I'm just gonna drag that into our document here. Drag that into our document. I'll scale it down a little bit. And the most important blend mode that we're gonna use here is overlay. So I'm gonna go into the blend modes and just choose overlay. We can already see how that is interacting with our brush stroke here. Um, and if we duplicate this layer, actually, we get that overlay pattern even more. Looks pretty cool. And if you wanna finish here, you can. Or you can just keep adding textures until you find something that looks looks even cooler. So I'm gonna drag a few more textures in here uh, just for sake of experimentation and display. All right, so I really like this one. I'm gonna drag this one in and I'm gonna position that right about here. And I'll set the blend mode to screen this time. This way it'll affect the darker parts of our brush stroke here. And I wanna turn the opacity down a bit as well so that it doesn't, you know, mesh too well. All right, so now that we have this grunged up brush stroke here, what we're gonna do is make a curves layer right on top of all these grunge textures. Of course, you can keep adding textures, you know, until the end of time. You can drag in some pretty unique textures in here, such as, you know, wood or leather or whatever. Cool textures you can find and just desaturate that and follow that same process with the overlay or whatever blending modes you want to use to, to make this all grunged up. But of course, as I mentioned, overlay would be the best option just because of how it interacts with the, the gradient that we have down here in our brush stroke. Okay, so like I was saying, let's go ahead and make a 
new curves adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the curves. And from here, we're just gonna take this top point and make sure it's still clipping with the top of the graph here. You don't wanna bring it down at all. Make sure it's still clipping the top of the graph and bring that to the left. And that's pretty much going to almost threshold this gradient. So it's cutting off a lot of the pretty much unnecessary gray values around here. Really just cleaning it up, making a tighter spread on this. Now the final step is to merge everything. And we can do that with Command Option Shift E. And that is going to make a flattened duplicate of all of our layers. Now let's just do Command A to select the whole canvas. We'll go up to Edit, go to Define Brush Preset, and just name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it Grunge 9. I don't know what number I'm on, probably not 9, but we're on Grunge 9 right now. All right, I'm gonna head back to my original document and let's test this out. So using the brush we just made, you'll notice that if you start painting with it, it looks, looks like shit. So how we can fix that is by going up to the brush settings over here. So click on this little icon next to your brush. That will bring up the brush settings. And the most important thing you wanna do is turn on the shape dynamics here and crank up this angle jitter and you can play with the other parameters as well for example the size jitter i like to crank that up a little bit too and the roundness jitter as well but most importantly make sure the angle jitter is turned up and you'll see now when we paint with this brush it's looking a lot better and a lot more like a grunge brush i'll get some detail shots for you here looking pretty cool now you can also play with the I guess the scattering or the, what's it called? The spacing right here of this brush, which is in the brush tip shape option right here. So just click on brush tip shape and you'll see spacing. And from here, you can obviously change the spacing of this brush. So the less you put it, the less spaced out it will be. So for brushes like this, it's good to play with the spacing because as you can see, when it's more spaced out, you kind of get more detail in the center of that brush. And when I bring this back to say like 15, 14, whatever in that range, when I start painting, you can see it gets really dark really quickly so obviously it's something you want to experiment with i just wanted to note that so you have more control over your brush now this is important every time you open up this brush it is not going to have these settings so if you want to save these settings what you're gonna to have to do is open up this little hamburger icon right here and click on new brush preset and just name this whatever you want but make sure you have include tool settings in there and that will save all these settings for this brush so that you don't have to you know go in there and change all the parameters every time so i'll just name this grunge youtube and now i have those settings saved and i can paint with this brush do whatever i want with it and these settings are all saved now if you're wondering where the infinite brushes part of this comes to play it's because of the fact that you can rinse and repeat this process with pretty much any texture that you can find so i'll open up the smart object and i'll turn off all these textures here and you can put in any textures that you want here and each time it'll come out with a different looking grunge brush and like i said you don't even have to use grunge textures you can use whatever textures you want and whatever you think will yield a cool result so i could even drag say a halftone pattern into here and scale that up set that to overlay i'm just going to blur this a little bit so we can get more more of those values interacting with the brush stroke below it so i'm just going to blur this and on top of this we can add maybe even some more textures maybe add those grunge textures back in looking pretty cool to me as i said rinse and repeat we're gonna merge all these layers select all go up to edit define brush preset and make that a new brush and look at that pretty cool stuff we have here half tone grunge brush now one more thing i want to mention is that it's very worth experimenting with the filter gallery with this brush smart object here so instead of using all this like the curves and the grunge textures on top you can also just go into the filter gallery for this layer go to filter filter gallery experiment with different stacks of effects for example in my fade out t designs video i used a grain stack with this stamp effect on top and that gave us sort of this nice grungy xeroxy brush which I really liked and I saved as one of my brushes. Check this out. This is a pretty cool effect using the graphic pen filter on here. If you want, you could add a stamp filter on top of that just to smooth things out. And this looks like it could be a pretty cool brush as well. Check out what it looks like when I use a glass filter under the stamp filter. This one's also really cool. I'm going to go ahead and try this one out. So once I press OK, same process. Select all and define brush preset. And of course, you're going to want to change those settings after you define the brush preset, such as the angle jitter, the roundness jitter, and so on. Look at this one. This one's pretty cool. I like this one. And that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some value from this. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. That's all I got for you for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.